Hey, this is John with Thrifted Flip, and on today's episode, we're gonna go into the Sabres here. We're gonna see what we can find that's undervalued that we could flip for a profit on eBay. Let's do it. Okay, let's get started and see what we can find. Looking at these clubs over here, looks like they're all just Walmart specials, nothing too exciting. Then we're gonna check out these electronics. You know me and my electronics, I love electronics. You know, when they're broken like that VCR up there, that's not something I'm gonna pick up. But, and then I'm looking over at this other stuff to see, like this one is not a good brand name, so I'm gonna pass on that. We're gonna go ahead and look to see if this is gonna be worth it, and boom, $49.99 for a radio? Are they serious about that? That might have been mispriced, I don't know. Uh, some places are just trying to get a lot of money. Now I do notice that there is this Denon 5 disc changer down here, and it looks pretty good at $13.49. Um, they are having a, a, a sale where it's 50% off, so we're gonna put that in the cart, and we're gonna test it out later to see if it actually works. A nice little keyboard with mouse. I don't think that's going to be worth any money. They do have the Sony radio just sitting here, and Sony's a great brand name for radios. So it looks to be in pretty good condition. Um, and you know what? At $10.49, now we're going to get 50% off of that. So it's only going to be like $5.25. We'll put that into the cart. We'll see if we're able to uh, test it out a little bit and see if it works. Now, there's a VCR here for $6.99. It'll only be like $4, $3.75, $3.50, something like that. But still, we got so many VCRs at home. We're not going to, we're not going to pick it up. There's a Nighthawk router out here. Those are pretty good. They could sell for like 20 bucks. Only problem is, you want $29.99 on it. Even at half price at $15, that is not going to be worth it. So we're going to just keep digging some more to see if we can find some other stuff to flip online for a profit. Um, I like to look at all these little radios that are sitting here. Uh, that one there didn't even have the speakers with it. So if it's not complete, I'm going to pass on that because there's no point in just picking up just the radio without the speakers that go along with it. Now there's some other stuff just kind of hanging out here. I'm looking to see if there's any sort of bow speakers laying around. Uh, that is an ergonomic keyboard, but it's the kind that has a, a wireless in it, so it needs the little adapter piece. And without that adapter piece, that, that keyboard is not going to be worth anything. Uh, look up on the top shelf to see if I could find anything of value. Just not seeing anything else that's really standing out to me that would, you know, bring in a profit. Now, these keyboards that were there, none were the ergonomic and none were gaming keyboards. Now, there is a, a five-disc Yamaha player here, and it does have the remote with it. So, you know what? We're going to pick that one up, put that into the cart. Now, I don't see a price on here, so that's a little bit of a concern um, because if it doesn't have a price, I don't know if they'd be able to price it out today. But nonetheless, we're going to test it, see if it works. And if it works, then we could go and talk to someone and see if they can price it. A lot of times what they do is they just say, yeah, we're not able to price it and we'll put it in the back room. But then there's some people that will say, you know what, hey, let me just price it. So it's kind of one of those things we just got to, you know, wait and see. But first, we're going to have to test it. But before we test it, I like to go through these little goodie bags, as I call them. You never know what you're going to find. One time I found three Nest uh, carbon monoxide fire um, uh, protection little units there. Uh, so... Uh, and those sell for like $60 a piece, and I found three of them in a bag one time. Now, over in the sporting goods, I like to look at, oh, tennis rackets, um, skates. Now, these tennis rackets, I don't know if you can see, but the strings are all mangled on it. Um, they're just not in good shape. That one's in better shape, but it was priced kind of high at $10.49 for a racket. Uh, the reality is, heck, I don't want to pay more than $5 for a racket, unless it's a really good one, but none of those ones are. Sometimes I can find some good mitts. Uh, I like to find the ones that are like catcher's mitts are usually the best. Uh, first, uh, first base gloves are always good. I do see this Cuisinart up here, 
it is intriguing. It's in the box, and I see that they want $19.99 for it. So uh, 20 bucks. I'm not going to be able to make a profit on that. So we're going to just pass and move on. Um, I like to see if I can find some ninja blenders over in this section because um, I could part those out and make some good money off the ninja blenders uh, just for the lids and the pitchers themselves. Not even the not even the motor. Um, I make my money off of the uh, the pieces of it. Like I do see a pitcher there, but it's not a ninja. Down here, $34.99 is one of those nostalgia, like all in one units. But yeah, I'm not going to be able to make money when they're wanting $35 for it. Now, you know me in vacuums, love to go to the vacuum section to see what I can find. Um, looking through these vacuums, nothing catches my eye there. So we're going to just move on. Then they have this other little section over here where it's kind of like odds and ends, different little pieces just kind of hanging out. You never know what you're going to find over in this section. Look over here and, well, that box with that router in it, well, it was empty. So that's why I didn't even bother picking it up. I felt that there was nothing in it. So no point in looking further because there's nothing in that box. So I'm just kind of looking around to see if I could find anything else that's, that's going to make us some money. Uh, you never know what's going to be in these boxes that are on the bottom shelf. So I like to poke around to see what I can find in there. Um, but yeah, this this section here really doesn't have anything that's, that's appealing. I do see this little Pioneer uh, DVD player. And a 1049, it would be good. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't working correctly. Um, the, the power was on, but uh, it wouldn't do anything else as far as playing DVDs or anything like that. Um, they do have uh, what appears to be, for $19.99, some sort of HEPA, HEPA uh, air cleaner, um, but it's all in parts, so it's not going to be worth it to, to pick up. I did want to see what brand it was, just to see if it was a hot brand, um, but it wasn't. It's was pretty much just a, a no-name brand. Uh, sewing machines can do really well. Uh, that one they want $39.99 for. It doesn't even have the power cord. Um, I love printers, but this printer's broken. It doesn't even stay like that. So no point in even doing a test on it to see if the pages are working correctly. Um, I like to look through the boxes. You never know what you might find in these boxes. You might find some treasure. In okay, next up I go over to the houseware section. And sometimes I can find some good cooking pans. Um, I like to look for Corel dishes, you know, things of that nature. Sometimes you can find some good, uh, even uh, Chinaware um, that could sell very well. Uh, over here behind me, there is a whole lot of dishes um, and even uh, cups. I mean, sometimes Starbucks cups can bring in some money. One time I found a cup and sold it for $95 just because it was a unique Starbucks type of cup. So it was pretty good. Uh, I think I paid just a couple bucks for it to sell it for $95. Um, so, hey, when you find those Starbucks types cups, always look them up. Now, here I'm just looking to see what kind of brand names I could find on some of this uh, uh, Chinaware. Um, and there's nothing that's really catching my eye for that. Uh, I then look to see what these other dishes are here. And it looks like it's all pretty much just standard type stuff. So nothing that's going to really be able to flip for a big profit. There are some nice patterns to it. I thought that one had a, a really nice pattern to it. Um, but it wasn't something that I was willing to pick up and try and flip for a profit. So just kind of going through to see if, hey, is any of this stuff going to be Worthy of picking up to sell. Lots of mugs in there. Um, now this one here looks looks different to me. Uh, looked pretty cool, but seven forty nine for just one little mug, and I, I guess it was a a fox. Was that a fox? And over here, I don't know what that's supposed to be. It's uh, kind of funky. Um, but hey, you know they got some unique looking uh, mugs over there for sure. Now, a lot of people like to uh, pick up glassware. For me, not so much. Uh, I have a fear of breaking all the glassware in shipping, so I don't want to put something fragile into the box and have it get to the people and have it broken. So, yeah, glassware is not for me, but a lot of people find glassware and 
make a good profit on it. So, so can you. Um, now, down here, I was looking to see if there's any Cutco butcher blocks down there. Um, I spun that just because I could. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, there was nothing. No Cutco boxes down there. There's a cool little cookie jar down here. So, looked at that, but at $14.99, that was not going to be something I'd be able to make a profit on. It was a cute little raccoon, I guess, but... Yeah, not something that I'd be able to make money off of, being that it was already at 15 bucks. But just going down the next aisle, I do see this foot down here. And it's pretty unique. It looks like a, a Bigfoot footprint. And down there, sure enough, it says Bigfoot by Stan 1976. So I thought about that, and I wanted to look it up to see if there was anything like that online. Um... I did look it up and I couldn't find anything on eBay. Did see this elephant there for 10 bucks for the elephant, but there was no markings on it for brand name or anything like that. So it was just a standard, you know, non non expensive model. Nice little glass here, but it it had some defects to it. So I decided to pass on that. I'm always looking for unique items, things that you just can't find, you know just anywhere so as I scroll through this section I see these little animals big old bunny up on top which was looking pretty neat um, looking to see if there's anything in that section I really didn't find anything so I went over to the media section look through their games look through their TVDs just looking for some sets uh, I like to get the sets of 24 hours the, that TV show those sell pretty well but there was nothing really here in this section that was, you know, worthy of picking up. So I went back to go do some testing. And this Denon uh, CD changer was actually, looks like it's working. Not able to do a full test on it here in the store. But I was able to make sure that it would actually at least play a CD. I don't know if it's skipping. I don't know if the audio is coming out. I do notice that there's a little bit of damage on one of the corners. But... You know what? At thirteen forty-nine, I'm only going to pay half of that. So at roughly just under seven dollars, I think that's probably a good thing to pick up. Now the Yamaha, it actually had the uh, the remote control with it, and this was one of the higher end Yamahas that are out there. It had a whole lot going on it for a, just a five disc changer. It's one of the more valuable units. I did put the disc into it, and as you can see, I'm hitting play. But it's just not wanting to play. So I messed with it for a while and just decided, you know what, I'm going to leave it behind. So then I wanted to test out the Sony radio. Now I do not have any speakers hooked up to it. So I'm not able to tell if it's actually going to be playing through the speakers. But I went through some of the button functions to make sure that it'll go from, you know, CD to tuner. Um, things like that. Just not able to see if it'll actually play through the speakers at this point. But I decide, you know what, for the price point, it's going to be just under six bucks for my cost. I'll go ahead and pick it up. So then I was scrolling along, seeing this Sony uh, TV. It looks pretty good, but they wanted like a hundred dollars for that thing. Now it came with the remote and everything, but yeah, and I'm not going to be able to ship that off. Let's be real. So I cut through the uh, the toy section uh, to see if there's anything that's going to catch my eye for toys. I'm always looking for, you know, G.I. Joe's, um, Star Wars figures, things like that. And then obviously through the plush. Just looking to see if there's any sort of vintage plush over there. Now this is a pretty big toy section, so you'd think I'd be able to find something over here. So looking through the little grab bags, you never know what might be in a grab bag, so they're always good to look through. Looking to see if there's any sort of uh, vintage games. I'd love to pick up the, uh, the Scrabble that has the turntable to it. Those ones sell really well for me. Um, also find some uh, Stratego, uh, things like that. Do find the adult trivia here. Um, it's not price, but it doesn't look like one that's going to, you know, be able to be sold for any good value. I'm not too sure what this uh, this pilot guy was, but, you know, he's just from a, 
uh, I think it was like a raw store or something like that. So there's not going to be a whole lot of value to him. So just scrolling through, there's tons of puzzles that they have for today. They do have some Tinker Toys up above. I used to pick up some Tinker Toys, but I always found the Tinker Toys never have all of their items in it. And then I was looking at that little baseball set with all those little figures in it because sometimes those can sell because they go to a uh, an old type board game but it wasn't the vintage pieces so I decided to leave that behind uh, then I'm just kind of just going through the rest of this stuff just to see if there's uh, something like a Jurassic Park type figure where he almost got gotcha. you um, but yeah these little ones were not Jurassic Park figures there's an Iron Man kind of sitting down there, but it is, it's not the kind that's going to bring in any money or anything like that. Uh, looking to see if, hey, maybe there's some dolls here. I'm uh, hoping for, you know, maybe an old strawberry shortcake or maybe a cabbage patch over in this bunch. But there's nothing, nothing really brewing over here. There's this cool little uh, guy up here, a little pig. I don't know if he's supposed to move. There's a button on his foot. I pressed it just to see what he would do. I thought he would, he would shake his rump a little bit, but yeah, no such luck. The batteries were dead. So the, the shoe selection here is not very good. There's not really anything worth picking up, especially at the price points that they have here. Um, just looking to see what brands they have. Like these are, I don't know, some no-name brands. Uh, there was no Nikes. Um, didn't see anything. I did see uh, that pair of Asics there, um, but you know what? They're not in really not in really good shape. And a random wheelchair just sitting there. Don't know why, but it is. So that's what we got for today. Now let's go see what we actually sold for today. Okay, so normally we show you all the stuff that we sold, and I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna show you how I boxed it for today. So the first thing that we sold, well, were these shoes. They're a size 13. They're actually pretty big shoes. We sold them for $25 plus $12.85 for the shipping or $12.50 for the shipping. I can't read, right? But hey, we put those into a poly bag right here. I bubble wrapped them up and then put them into a poly bag and they shipped off for $12. So we made, well, with 50 cents in profit, that actually went towards the bag and, and the uh, the bubble wrap. So we really didn't make any money on the shipping, but that's okay. The next item up is actually in this little box. And what we got is a Dutch oven and brazier hot handle cast iron grips. Yeah, that's a, that's a mouthful. Let me show you a picture of what we got here. And these sold for $8 plus $12.85 for the shipping. Um, we actually reduced the shipping by $3 because we saw that, hey, it could go first class in one of these boxes. So, you know, it only costs like $5 to ship it off first class and it fit beautifully inside this box. So we did that. And so, yeah, that one's going out. Let me find the next item that we sold here. Okay, the next item that we sold is in this big box down here. Here, we'll start with this one. This box, an 18 by 14 by 6 box and this one is for a Sony Blu-ray disc player which is right here and that one sold for $41.80 and the shipping on it was $22.95 and it took about that much to actually ship that one off so we didn't make a profit on that now our next item is an air purifier made by Honeywell and it's going into this giant U-Haul box. This is one of the medium boxes you find at U-Haul. So packed it in there. It's, it's a big guy, which is right here. And that one sold for $54.10. And the shipping on that one was $42.95. It actually cost about $30 to ship. So we probably made about $12 in profit just on the shipping itself right there. And then the last item that we sold is a, Pan a, a Pioneer disc. And it sold for $5.69. It looks like this right here. And the shipping on that is $5. So it actually costs $5 to ship off. So that's what it looks like. So 
Those are our five items that we got sold for today. And you know, we, we normally have seven, so it was a little bit of a slow day, but hopefully today is a much better day. And I hope you're having a great day too. And if you, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, you know what to do. Subscribe so I can see you on the next video.